What's up, everybody? Paul here from the Hoops Crew, and it is match reaction time. And today we get to debrief on the Cats getting the chocolates against the Fremantle Dockers away from home. It was awesome. Um, and I guess it continues to throw up curveballs when it comes to these two particular teams when they go head to head, because the last few times Freo have come to Geelong, they've gotten the points against us. We've traveled over there and done the same. So it's. Uh, it's hard to get a bit of a read on the two teams when they go head to head at the moment. They continue to upset one another, but we got the we got the points. As I bring up the scoreline, it reads nine eight sixty two Fremantle to ten thirteen seventy three to the Cats. Great final result, and I think a really great game overall. But let's kind of take some time to kind of pick through it and what we saw from the worm. And I want to talk about some more holistic things. And one of the subjects that for me has been a bit of a conversation point for quite some time now which has been Geelong's inability to hold off a team when they get some momentum and today this weekend we saw the Geelong footy club do that in that second term now Geelong obviously kind of dominated the first Freire got a couple late-ish goals um to kind of I guess add some respectability to the uh, the first quarter scoreline but ultimately Geelong dominated the first term they d dominated the final term Despite the scoreline, I think we dominated the third term as well. The second was where Frio had some control there. But what Geelong did very, very well was, um, to, despite the fact they ultimately lost the, the second term, just like they did the third, um, in that second quarter specifically, we've seen Geelong over the, over the, this season, whether it's been against Sydney, Port, there's been a number of other scenarios where teams have piled on goals really, really quickly. Carlton, even when we won early in the season, they piled on a bunch really, really late and gave an almighty scare in that case. But we've seen teams get a massive run on. They've kicked rapid successions of goals. And Freo positioned themselves to do just that. But what Geelong did really, really well was blunt their, their strides forward. They didn't 100% stop them. And, of course, if we look at that second term, uh, Freo kicked 3-3 three, three to Geelong's 2-2 two, two in that second quarter. But what we did was kind of keep them at bay and, and see out that wave of momentum that they had. And that gave us opportunities to springboard from there. Now, we didn't necessarily do that in the third quarter. And the scoreline um, score kind of shows it that we fell behind. But the thing that I think gets lost, and I heard a little bit when, uh, when we were running post-game live yesterday after the game and the sentiment expressed by Ben and even some others that kind of piled through is that maybe we lost that, like we... we struggled through that third term. No, I think it was very much a 50-50, a if not slightly in Geelong's favour in terms of the way the game looked, but in terms of the scoreboard, things didn't work out for us. And that was down to pure inaccuracy, not something we tend to associate with Geelong, where we kicked one goal five to Frio's 3-3 three, three again. It was just simply the fact that we were a little more inaccurate in that term. Uh, and there were ve some very simple set shots that we missed over the course of this entire game. But... Um, yeah, I think I think we just we played better football. We just couldn't capitalize at the end. And then, of course, the final term, everything went up a gear. Danger in particular grabbed the ball by the horns, uh, took the game on, pick, picked everyone up on his shoulders, and carried us there. But everyone came on board with him. This wasn't what we used to see back in the 2016-17s, where it would be Danger, Selwood, Hawkins, um, Ablett when he when he joined the club. That would we'd just have to rely on them to carry us over the line because the talent, the skills, the the depth wasn't there to match it. No, danger lifted and the team went with him. And it was awesome to see. Um, and we kind of reined in that lead that we'd kind of forfeited in the third term. And we we absolutely dominated that final term. We just couldn't quite pile on the goals to shake them. But uh, again, some inaccuracy caused us a bit of issues there, a bit of an issue there. But we I think we should have won this game by a bit more than what we did, uh, had it not been for some poor kicking. All right. Let's get to some team stats next where we can kind of analyze things on that level as well. And for the most part, it paints a rosy picture. I think it fairly well uh, emulates what I was talking about. And then we'll look at some of our highlight players. We don't play a higher possession game, but we we had a quieter game when it came to disposal count this week. Freo do we play a higher possession game. Like, um, I think what we saw here with that that golf in difference of numbers was a, a team that tried to employ, I think, what Frio, sorry, what uh, North Melbourne tried to employ against us a few weeks back with the the forward handball. Frio, when they got on when they got on a bit of a charge, when they were clicking on all cylinders, 
their forward handball game was good, just like North Melbourne's was in that game against us. But again, we I think we did a pretty good job of dulling that once we recognised what was going on. But they did play a high possession game, a lot of kick mark, a lot of a lot of handball, and that's fine because it didn't ultimately prove to be a difference between the two teams. Uh, inside 50 count, very even, but again, they had a much more possession. You'd expect it a little bit. Disposal efficiency was high. Credit to Frio. They really did. They were very, very clean with the ball. But Geelong just kind of maintained their average. That's Frio's game, the disposal efficiency one. They they play that. Um, I haven't done a direct comparison team v team, but Frio's, I believe, is right up there at the pointy end, one of the highest at 76% disposal efficiency. What we did incredibly well, though, was uh, caused them to, like when the time came to deliver the ball inside 50, we made it very, very hard for them. The pressure was high. Our defenders were positioning themselves very, very well. And so the, the efficiency inside 50 was much poorer as a result. Uh, that's kind of where we really um, strong-armed them a little bit there. Even our numbers were down, but that was the, the nature of the game a little bit. It was very high to stakes. It was very high intensity. Both teams played very, very well in that regard. From there, the free kick count. It's good to see that we're back on the receiving end of uh, of the the umpires once again. I'm going to address a couple of the big top, uh, talking points from the game. There was obviously a mark that Shannon Neal was paid uh, that resulted in a goal. He didn't deserve that mark, but that's also squared up by the fact that the arc made an obvious blunder when it came to a Grian Myers uh, goal, a second goal that Grian should have kicked um, that should have been paid to him, I should say. Uh, he was absolutely done in that case. The shadows on the ball. Thank you to Western Australia for being so constantly hot and the sun always being out. The shadows showed that he hadn't touched the ball at that particular point. The shadows like of his hand above the ball creates a shadow. I, you can even see it as I hold my hand, one hand over the other here. There's a shadow. But once the pressure's there, you don't see that. I don't understand how they came to the, the conclusion that they did. But I think those two big errors um, balanced each other out. Uh, moving on from there, stoppage. I was so beyond stoked to see that we won the, the clearances across the board. Again, it's it's been, we've been turning a weakness into a strength in re- recent weeks. It's been really, really good to see. It's helped that we've had a Ruckman playing and really uh, playing some pretty good football. Reece Stanley, we'll talk about you again shortly. Um, no, the hitouts, the hitouts to advantage. It's been really, really helpful. We've been winning more clearances, not just around the ground like we've always done, but at the center clearance, it's been incredible. I'm loving it. It's so good to see our midfield, you know, strong arming oppositions a little bit. So let's keep moving on from that because that's, I don't want to get stuck on that highlight too much because who knows uh, next week we could completely blow it. Contested possessions were great. Uncontested linking back to the disposal efficiency thing from before uncontested possession is what leads that, uh, that seasonal average that they've got. And of course they were even higher in this particular game. They had a lot more uncontested ball turnovers. Great. We will uh, less in that in that regard. And again, I think all of these stats here when it comes to possession, that all really links into what I was discussing before. They play a high possession, high efficiency, low risk game in a lot of respects. And so they're going to have overall match possession. They're going to have, well, I mean, we squared it up in the final term, but that pressure was immense. And then the last 10 minutes, we were not taking the foot off the throat. And it was awesome to see. Again, Kick mark, kick mark, kick mark. That's their game. Contested marks, awesome. We were much further ahead, I believe, at one point, but then things kind of, you know, at, at different stages of the game, they managed to clunk a few. Credit to them. And then everything else is just around the scores. We know this. No, nothing to see there. The defensive pressure I touched on before was immense. Highlighted with the tackles, but specifically the tackles inside 50 were the thing that impressed me so much. And our, our count got high very, very quickly. Geelong did an incredible job of pressuring uh, the Fremantle defenders, creating turnovers, or at least breaking breaking even a contest. It was really, really good to see. Uh, I'd imagine all 18 of those bounces are Max Holmes. <laughs> Enough said there. Uh, but again, going back to you know tackles, one percenters. Geelong were bringing the goods in all the right spaces this weekend. It was awesome to see. And the interchanges, sure, whatever. All right, let's move to some individual player stats because there are some real highlights I want to address. I said I'd come back to Reece Stanley. He's not going to feature as like one of the best on the ground when it comes to AFL fantasy or disposals or any of the things that are usual triggers. He's only going to be a feature on top when it comes to hitouts. He got the job done against Luke Jackson. It certainly helped that Sean Darcy wasn't playing. He was laid out about 20, 30 minutes before the game. But his around the ground work was also really, really good. It was uh, He didn't, you know, get a lot of the ball. We can see this. He had seven disposals. But his pressure was good. He was constantly a presence. He was always 
Oh, gosh, sorry. He was always buzzing around the ball. It was a really complete performance from Reece Stanley. Got a goal himself. The only time when he let himself down in any regard, as far as I'm concerned, was there was one scenario where Luke Jackson, it resulted in Luke Jackson's only goal for the day. Uh, Luke Jackson came charging out of the goal square and Reese didn't go with him. And Reese needed to body him up. Um, that was that was a bit disappointing in that regard. But overall, pretty happy with what Reese Stanley brought. And he was, of course, well supported by uh, Mark Blitzarves, who uh, coast into the ruck from time to time. But Blitz himself, I would argue, put together his best game of the season as well uh, this weekend, playing at fullback. In the absence of Sam DeConing, he went back. Um, we've seen, obviously, Mark Blitzars play as a key defender in the past. I love seeing Mark, uh, Mark Blitzars as a, as a key defender over the years. And it was good to see him back there. And I think we need to be willing to pull that lever from time to time. I think we probably learned a little bit from the Geelong and the Dogs game in terms of how we can address the height. And we, I think we got a, a reminder that Mark Blitzars is a perfect person to fill that role. So congratulations, Blitz. That was an awesome effort. Uh, moving on from there, back to kind of some of the other stats we tend to look at more. Get out of here, Dockers. You're just like handballing it to you to yourselves. Grime Myers, our leading disposal getter, after a very, very lean week and certainly a lot more attention being put on him over the course of the last six to eight weeks. Had a great game today. Uh, was in the votes for, for me personally. Uh, 23 disposals. Should have had two goals. Uh, got robbed there of the second. He did all the right things. He was super, super efficient, super creative, and um, look, just, there was some magic that came from Grind today. It was, it was a great game from him. We can continue running down the list. Max Holmes doing Max Holmes things. Zach Guthrie doing Ga- Zach Guthrie things. Um, had some moments, Zach Guthrie. It wasn't his best performance of the season, but he was very, very solid, very reliable. Ollie Dempsey continues to tighten his grip on the Rising Star Award for this year. And Paddy Dangerfield was best on ground for mine, um, especially in the final term. And we don't get that breakdown of quarter by quarter here. But what Paddy Dangerfield did... Uh, throughout throughout the match, but especially in the last term, was nothing short of in- inspirational for all, uh, for those of us watching, but also the players out on the ground. He was an incredible force, contested marks, probably took four or five at least himself, I think. He, he, hang on, how many marks did he even get for the game? Took three marks for the game. I'd imagine they're all contested. Um, he, was, he was such a force, and the only thing, as per usual when it comes to danger, is his accuracy for goal. It was a little bit wobbly, and of course he missed that one that he tried to uh, volley out of the air in the goal square where he had time to grab it, but that's okay. Like he's a legend. He's done incredible things. Um, and he ultimately, I think won us the game. He can, he can have that blunder, whatever. Tom Stewart just continues to roll on Tom Atkins. It was good to see getting back into the, into the game again. Um, he, he's been uh, slowly building into the season. He's definitely gone off to a slow start, but has been building. Lawson Humphreys has been great. Blitzarves, I spoke about. Shawnee Manor popping up at all the right times to to be a match sealer in in this particular case. He was he was incredibly impressive. Jeremy Cameron in his 250th had a great game as well. Again, could have uh, could have been a bit more efficient around the sticks, but he also kicked a goal. It was very very reminiscent of what we saw in the qualifying final against the Pies in 2022, and I'm all about that. Uh, Zach Tui was pretty solid, but of course, uh, I think the questions are going to continue to get asked by people as to whether he should or shouldn't be in the team when it comes to the finals. I, for one, believe he belongs. I think he's had a great season. His clearance numbers show it as well with three clearances too. Jack Henry was very, very good as a defender. Very happy with the performance from Jack Henry today. Jay Cole Jasney. Oh, sorry, I missed Jack Bowes. Jack Bowes was great as well. Again, clearances has been a real key, but he was also great defensively throughout the game as well. Very happy with Jack Bowes' performance. Cole Jasney, I think, has slipped a little bit since the really impressive start of the season, but he's continuing to fire along well. He's uh, not losing many contests, which is all you can ask for as a, as a defender. Mitch Duncan with a very, very quiet one, um, but that's okay. Not going to fire all the time, and it was nice to see we got the chocolates without him needing to get 20 disposals. Brad Close was solid. Chad O'Neill popped up when we needed him, kick, uh, kicked two goals, one. Very, very happy about that. Of course, got a freebie in the end. Ollie Henry, I think, really struggled at different points, especially after, I think it was in the third term when he hurt his back. He was clearly very hampered by that. And, I mean, look, he kicked one goal, two. Should have probably been two goals, one. Could have arguably been three goals straight. Based on how Ollie normally kicks for goal, you could tell he was really struggling with the pain and it was potentially having an impact on his ability to kick kick the ball and, and kind of get the arc that he needs. So hopefully he's right for next week, but I could totally understand him having a week off to recover. Tyson Stengel was very, very well held. Massive credit to what Frio did. Tyson Stengel's been in white-hot form in recent weeks uh, for the last few months, really, and um, they did a great job of curbing his influence in this particular match, but still... Very prominent, very present, some handy little taps, things that aren't going to get recorded as a stat. 
he did a great job. Spoken about Reese Stanley, Oshie Mullen and Tanner Bruin, we can obviously kind of ignore uh, for the most part. Oshie Mullen came in for a Tanner Bruin concussion. Tanner Bruin was tracking pretty well until he got, uh, well, until he, oh, sorry, until he was seeing stars. Oshie Mullen came in and did the job. I would question whether he was the right person to be the sub this week, but he contributed. He did a solid job, and I look forward to seeing him continue to develop going forward. And so that's it. Those are my thoughts on the Geelong v Frio match this week. Very good result. Very, very happy to see it. We finished that game in second. We are now current, sorry, in third. We are now sitting fourth on the ladder after Port got the win earlier that evening or later that evening. But I'm, I'm happy with how we're traveling. I'm happy with where we're at. I hope you are too. Top two seems like a very distinct possibility right now. It would be awesome to get a home final. Well, it'll be at the G most likely. And to be fair, the way we're playing in Geelong so far this year, I'd be okay with that. But, um, Couple couple games to go against the Saints at Marvel, West Coast in Geelong. Tomahawk, the question is going to continue to bubble along. He's getting close to being available. Cam Guthrie is close to get, uh, becoming available again. Do these guys get a game? It's hard to argue against any of those who are in the twenty three right now. They've been doing a phenomenal job, and I don't know who you make uh, who you remove to make room for these guys. So it's going to be a really fascinating conversation. But it's a good conversation to be having. It means the competition for spots is fierce. All right, everyone. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Check out all the Hoops Crew content on YouTube. Go find us on Patreon where you can subscribe for free for a week. Get free and exclusive access to all of the things that we do there. And then if you like what you're getting, subscribe beyond that. Uh, for the cost of 5 or $6 for the entire month, you get an entire library of content, exclusives, early access, and more. It's great. Find us on social media. Find me at Paul James Games on socials. And until next time, thanks, as always, for watching. Remain Geelong strong, and I'll see you later.